Welcome back to UG Radio. In the morning, in the AM. What am I doing? I don't know. But my voice sounds cool this early in the morning. I mean, the jury's out on that. Wow. No, how dare you? <laughs> how I just dare immediately you? shut that down. Is this because someone commented stick ASMR? Yes. Uh, and you. <laughs> but I will refuse ASMR until. Oh, okay. Um, someone buys me ice cream. Uh, I can buy you ice cream. It'll probably melt by the time it gets here, but okay. Probably. I'll okay. Just, like, I'll find a place that delivers near where you live. Yeah. You send me your address and I get ice cream delivered to you. Oh, that's, that's true, that's true. And we all yeah. benefit from stick ASMR. We have a guest today, by the way. Who is that guest? <clears throat> Speak. Hello? Speak now, no, forever peace. Uh... <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Hi, this is Shane. <laughs> You're on the podcast. Don't let them lie, they have me in the basement. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my, my current court. Oh, he's not supposed to say that. <laughs> yeah. Come oh. on, man. Alright, no, no, no. Stop the recording. Retake that. Retake oh. that. <laughs> no. um, keep it in. This is, yeah, this is Shane, uh, aka Bullet Hell, who doesn't play Team Fortress 2 with us, but does play Apex with us and gets yelled at in Apex a lot. Yeah. I wonder by who. Uh, uh, no comment. It's definitely me. No. Def- I'm, yep. <laughs> I'm the sweatiest, saltiest Apex player, and you can't convince anyone <laughs> otherwise. Alright. What are we talking about today, though? <clears throat> so, what I wanted to talk about today was the sort of evolution of video game genres, mm. because it's always been just a fascinating topic, where you see, like, way back in the day, someone had a really good idea, uh, and then, like, a trend evolves to match that idea, and uh, then it spawns an entire genre. It's like, I don't know, you think about genres today, like, think of it this way. When I say Battle Royale game, right, back in, like, 2000, that could have meant anything. That could have meant, like, a free-for-all deathmatch. It could have meant, like, I don't know, Tetris 99, where you're up yeah. against, you know, 70 million different players, right? But when I say it uh, in current context, you think of, uh, okay, I'm going to select a character uh, that may or may not have their own special abilities, and then I'm going to fly in from some area in the sky, land on a giant map that is closing, and uh, and Duke grab gear, and fight people uh, who may or may not be on different teams. Like, that yeah. specific type of game is super prevalent, and it's called a battle royale, even though, like, Started out as like a hero shooter. Uh, I'm not even really that because there are battle royale games like Warzone where the characters don't really have any special abilities. Yeah, that's so, true. Um, so what I wanted to talk about was the evolution of those kinds of genres, and obviously, Shane plays a lot of video games. That's why. Does he? That's why we have him on here. Uh, Shane plays yeah. a lot of video games. I'm here. Shane plays Apex with us. <laughs> yeah. I suppose. Yeah. And he plays Minecraft. I wouldn't and, call uh, it play, but you know, it's, you know. Wow. Cannon fodder. <laughs> you can't. We're not just going to dog on Shane. No, 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 no. Podcast, are we? No, 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 like, no. <laughs> but, so, uh, Battle Royale. Battle Royale. To my knowledge, the first kind of idea for a Battle Royale game. Uh, Minecraft Amar. Hunger Games. Yes. Uh, yeah. Any of you guys play Minecraft Hunger Games in the, back in the day? Oh yeah, all the Minecraft time. Minecraft Hunger Games. Yeah, I I think. Uh, tell me, like uh, there might be something even older than that. Well, so the very first There's ideas of it that were mainstream was from the Hunger Games, yeah, where you book. pit up 12, 24 people in an arena and just say go at it, mm. which they... Minecraft sort of took hold of because it worked really yeah, well. Yeah, if you haven't read the Hunger Games books or seen the movies, the general gist of it is you get 24 kids from all over the country, throw them into an arena, uh, and fight to the like death. A central, a central start point. Um, and what they can do is they can either fight over the central starting point, that is a bunch of weapons and gear, or they go out into the fringes of the arena and, and try, try to, to gear up and survive. Yep. And it was more about, like, surviving against the elements and people trying to kill you um <laughs> yeah yeah but uh they morphed it kind of into like you know the game master 
uh, so some big wigs pulling the strings behind the scenes, they would force teams closer together using animals or, you know, barriers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. barriers and crap like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Minecraft Hunger Games, at least the version that I'm familiar with, uh, started out pretty similar. You start out in a team of, well, sometimes you could do it a team, sometimes you could do solo, but you start out in a group of people at this central start point, and then you can either fight over the central start point to get gear and loot, or you can run, run away off into the wherever. Um, there wasn't really a whole lot of surviving against the elements because it's Minecraft. Yeah. I mean, other really than like lava pits, that was about yeah. it. Um, so you would just like not, I, I guess if you run across another player, that's really, really the only threat, but you just run around looting. And then what they, uh, one of the, I, I believe one of the more popular ideas was after a certain amount of time, everyone who was still alive would teleports back get to the center. Teleport to the center for a final death match. Yep. And that center would be like it would have a small like closed, closed area. off, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it was an interesting and, idea. Like, already mm-hmm. there, you can kind of see the baseline idea for what a modern battle royale would do. You get a lot of people, and it's elimination. Like, once you die, there's no respawning. Uh, or limited respawning. Um, and then you get slowly forced together into closer and closer range fighting until someone eventually dies. Yep. Uh, and, and someone wins. Um, that kind of thing got evolved into... And I don't remember which one was the first, but I know that PUBG was one of the more popular ones. The uh, first one was H1Z1. H1Z1 yeah. was the first one to try and take that Minecraft okay. formula further. Please tell me about enough. H1Z1, because I never played it. So originally it started out as a zombie survival game, um, and then they made a game mode where instead of fighting zombies, like, there were still zombies on the map, but you also fought everyone else. Um, King of the Hill. Yeah, King of the Hill. Um... Started out as a king of the hill, but then they're just like, hey, why not just make it H1Z1 where it's like you and zombies against other players. Um, it kind of sucked, though, because it was really <laughs> janky and yeah, poorly programmed. Yeah. Um, so then PUBG swooped in, and that's where they succeeded. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Because they went for a third-person approach, but you could also go first-person if you wanted, and that worked out really well. PUBG um, really took off. Uh, yeah, it and kind of set the standard for. Uh, now, I I haven't played PUBG in a in a hot minute. I don't remember how you drop in. the The whole drop in mechanic, the whole drop in idea, um, where you start at some place in the sky and you fall for an amount of time towards where you, like, a designated point on the map. Mm-hmm. Uh, who did that first? PUBG. Pub- that was a PUBG thing? Yeah, that was a PUBG, and yeah. then popularized by Fortnite. Because mm. they had their battle bus that everybody just fell in love with. <laughs> um, kind of insane. Giant air balloon. Hot air yeah. balloon bus. But then other games decided to take it a different route, where you just select, like, a point on the map, and you just are there. Mm. You spawn there. Yeah. I was thinking, because the whole Because that was idea, Warzone, wasn't it? Uh, Warzone... Warzone you has you spawn plane. in the plane, yeah. Does yeah. It? Okay. And then uh, Apex has you spawn from a dropship. Uh, yeah. I don't know about Farlight 84, because I don't play that. That one's you drop from, like, little pods up in the area. And then... Uh, and, and now that I'm thinking about it, like, this whole idea of select somewhere on the map and drop in, like... Freaking Helldivers does that. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's not a battle royale. <laughs> it did, yeah. I, I mean... There, there is one interesting one, because you brought up like, fighting the elements earlier. There's, There was one that was called Ring of Elysium. I don't know if it's still active or not. I think it is, but... Ring of Elysium was styled as a winter survival battle royale. Ooh. So it was built Ooh, on yeah. this like winter storm that was closing in the ring. Um, right. And... That's another thing that, like... And he would slowly freeze if you were outside for too long and things like that. That Instead of... uh, You know, players have had... Like, game game creators have had ways of making players not go somewhere. Um, Like, before. Uh, You know, you got Sea of Thieves that has the the red... The shroud. The shroud that will destroy your ship. Or you got Subnautica with Leviathan monsters that'll 
destroy you if you go out of bounds. Um, but, I, again, and I think it was PUBG. I don't know if people give PUBG enough credit for all the ideas that, that it spawned. The circle that just closes in and it's got deadly gas or deadly, like, brains gas. or skin or whatever. Yeah. Um, because everybody freaking copied that. I know, Apex has the ring, um, which is like a barrier of... Energy melt, that just melt your skin melts energy. you. Yeah. Um, uh, Warzone has gas, and then they have gas masks. Uh, like, And then, I, I don't know what Farlight 84 has, because I don't play a lot of Battle uh, Royale. Similar so. energy ring thing, mm -hmm. yeah. Because originally, again, it was uh, from the Hunger Games, you get pushed towards other people using monsters or... Uh, like environmental factors. Really they just angry teleport bugs. you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Minecraft Hunger yeah. Games would straight up teleport you. Yeah. Um, Later on, they added like an, uh, a bedrock wall that would slowly push everything in, I think. Mm, that was like, like, I think that's barrier. after. Yeah. The... Well, eventually they added barriers, so they were able to just use barriers. But I think originally it was bedrock or something like that. Um, yeah. So. I mean, Anyways. the main takeaway from that little chat that I just had was, wow, PUBG had a lot of good ideas. And yeah, and then people iterated on it. Um, <laughs> people copied them and did it better. Well, in the same vein, right, you've got mixtures of game genres that kind of go well together. So Hero Shooters started out in, um, actually all the way back in Quake, because in Quake you could pick up different guns and they would each act and play completely different. And eventually they were like, yeah, you can just spawn with your own preferred weapon. Is that... So, when you talk about hero shooters, because the, the evolution of the, cla the, the class-based shooter yeah. into a hero shooter is what I'm mostly thinking about. Yeah. Well, where it started out as class-based, right? Yeah, I was going to say, where do we draw the line between class-based and hero shooter? I think class-based is more of a... You choose your playstyle within a set boundaries. Mm. Can I offer a different postulation? Okay. So I'll uh, reject it, uh, but yeah. <laughs> a, uh, a a a class based shooter, and when you say class, the class that you're talking about is sort of an air quote generic, like th there's no character to it, right? The, the class Mr. Gun like Guy. Just, yep, it's, yep. You're, you're the same dude. It's just you have, you know, different equipment, uh, a different loadout, a different play style, right? Versus a hero shooter where the class or person that you pick is a distinct individual. Yep. Um, cough, Team Fortress 2, right? Because, yes, you pick a class, like a scout, but scout isn't just... You know the loadout scout is a scout is the boy that runs fast but you can yeah. choose different guns and such for yeah. him yeah he's a dude from boston that likes to yell at people and and he is the hero in the hero shooter even though they didn't call it that at the time because they didn't know I, so but i, I want to bring it to a couple games there's two games uh one that i know a lot about and one that i don't know a lot about the one that I don't know a lot about, but I would classify as one of the earliest hero shooters, would be uh, Star Wars Battlefront. Because, oh, yeah. because you can play as classes, right? You can play as... You choose as a rocket trooper, and then you get yeah. a rocket launcher. But you could also play as heroes. Like the Jedi and the Sith. And... Yeah. yeah. You can play as Darth yeah. Vader, or you can play as Luke Skywalker, and those were heroes. Now, obviously, that's because in the movies, those characters were super important. And I'm sure people wanted to play as them. Oh, yeah. I mean, people have been wanting to play as Loot Skywalker for, I think, ever since. <laughs> ever since Star episode Wars. four came out, yeah. Yeah, but mm -hmm. um, so that was like the first idea. The other game that I wanted to bring up was uh, Renegade from Command and Conquer, and the idea behind Renegade was uh, you are playing one character in a grand like uh, an rts a real-time strategy game you are playing as a unit and you can pick different classes of units you can pick gunner or grenadier or shotgunner or rocket trooper but you can also pick specific heroes from the campaign so you could pick hey i want to play as patch or i want to play as uh well gunner was the name of one of them or i want to play as um hotwire and these are hero characters that have their own special abilities and their own personalities instead of just being a generic soldier with a rocket launcher yeah. so those games were i believe 2002 a um, long time ago yeah 
pretty stinking early. The class-based shooter evolved from that, and, and also Team Fortress Classic, which was just a mod from Half-Life, mm. if I remember. It was. Um, that I think the one that we can all point to for the evolution of the hero shooter is actually just Team Fortress 2. Pretty much. Because Team and Fortress Shane will not play it. I don't know why. I refuse. How dare you. Shane's just not a fan of TF2. No, I'm um, not. Valve took the idea of the individual classes from Team Fortress Classic and said, yeah, but what if we gave them, like, tons different of Different weapons, yeah. And, and also different weapons, yeah. Well, unlockable weapons weren't a thing in, in TF2 original TF2 so now. Mm -mm. Uh, I don't remember when the first... I think it took them a year and a half to start doing yeah. unlockable weapons. Mm -hmm. and unlock Maybe a little less than that. Unlockable weapons allow you to swap your loadout within the same like class. class yeah um but what makes it a hero shooter at least for me again is that like the characters have individual personality person. and whatnot yeah yeah they're you're not playing as you know a person who equips a rocket launcher you're playing as the soldier who <laughs> he is not going to act or play anything like the engineer because you're two completely different characters yeah um now obviously team fortress 2 was wildly successful but when we start talking about, air quote, modern hero shooters, <clears throat> the game that Overwatch. kind of... It, they wanted to meld uh, a MOBA, which is its own genre, yep. um, with uh, a, a shooter, a first-person shooter. Yep. And so they had abilities to come off of cooldown that are unique to each character. And boom, we got Overwatch. Yeah, and, um, and it, it also... More than just Overwatch with that one, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there were other games right before it, too, that tried to emulate that same style. Ooh, um, do tell, because I'm not actually that well-versed in them. So, hero shooters kind of also evolved into MOBAs themselves. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it, it was... Backwards. Yeah, well, no, not evolved backwards. So you had RTSs, um, right, yes. where you place down units and everything, and during the StarCraft II era, uh, a brilliant man named Icefrog... Uh, created what is now known as Dota, uh, was Defense that of the Ancients. I thought, that was, I thought that was Warcraft. Or 3. Warcraft, not Starcraft. Sorry. Yeah. Warcraft. <laughs> I, Starcraft also had its own MOBA tried to be made, but it didn't work I out gotcha. as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, so Warcraft <clears throat> evolved into Dota, <clears throat> um, which was a mod made by Ice Frog, who is <clears throat> uh, now a developer at Valve, or still <clears throat> is, maybe isn't. I don't know. Anyways. Um, so they took the hero aspect of like these characters get special abilities and whatnot that they can do throughout the match, and yeah, then you have like commando unit, well commando units, um, but like yeah. yeah, special units in Warcraft that have their own abilities. Their own abilities. So they're just like, yeah, why don't you just control one unit and activate special abilities for that one unit? And then the minions are the generic units. That exactly. Spawn and walk at the enemy base. Exactly. So then that evolved into MOBAs, um, like League of Legends, Smite, a Smite. Um, all that good stuff. And I think Smite was a huge bridging point for the genre. Because, uh, Smite was 2011, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 2013 was when it was officially released, yeah. Um, yeah, 2011 was early, like... Alphas and betas, betas, yeah. So, um, but Smite took the MOBA and brought it down to a third-person, third -person like, level, the yeah. view. Mm -hmm. I think that was a big bridge for it, because now you had, like, previously you had to aim your skill shots with a top-down view. And now everything was mouse-driven, with clicking yeah. on the map and whatnot, yeah. Now you've got WSA and D, and you aim your skill shots by aiming... A reticle, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like you've got a crosshair. Actually, aiming versus. Yep. Um, so you combine Team Fortress Two with Smite, and you get Overwatch. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. And I hate to, I hate to accept that, but I do. Uh, even and you know we could talk about the state of Overwatch right now, but let's like, not. You gotta, you gotta yeah, give not. credit to those original guys who made that. Yeah, I was a huge fan of Overwatch, and I hated it. Like, oh, I loved it game. too. I, I no I longer it. am a fan, but yes, I loved it too. Um, where they took a lot of ideas. Uh, I, I mean, they took a lot of ideas like aimbot and wall hacks, and just made them abilities for characters <laughs> in the game. Like, you know, that that was brilliant. Who needs but, cheaters uh, when you can just it. legally cheat? So oh, yeah. people took that 
formula where instead of, hey, let's do a class-based shooter with heroes. I mean, and obviously you got a lot of games that kind of copied Overwatch. We also got games uh, that, like, essentially, you know, what Valorant does is let's make a hero shooter, but it's Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike, yeah. Or uh, Apex, where let's make a hero shooter, but it's a battle royale. Yeah, um, it's, it's good uh, mixing. Yeah. And you get some and very so, lovely gems out of it got a bunch of different ideas from a bunch of different genres and now that i'm thinking about it it's pretty funny how both the idea of a moba and the idea of a hero shooter came from real-time strategy games yes mm -hmm. because the mo you know moba was defense of the ancients and uh the idea for the hero shooter i mean commando units in command and conquer that was the the idea for the heroes in renegade so, I mean, take it as... Either, and uh, Renegade wasn't that popular, so I'm, I'm going to assume that... Everything most... devolves to Warcraft eventually. <laughs> uh, but, like, uh, somebody it, it, decided, is it... what if we all played as commando units and also did a MOBA? <laughs> and that, yeah. That's essentially how that happened. Way um, in, Shane. I, it, that, that's how it goes. <laughs> and then it... it well, somebody everything's... Has either evolved into a MOBA mm. or some form of a arena shooter. Mm. I think that's a product of its time, too. Everybody wants to play a super fast gameplay style. Yeah. Well, which hero so, shooters and arena games lend themselves to. I was going to say, game genres have trends, right? Back yep. in the early thousands, it was real-time strategy games with stuff like StarCraft and Command and & Conquer duking it out with each other. E even some Age of Empires, right? And uh, even before then, like in the early video games, you had platformers, you had early shooters like Doom, Quake, uh, Marathon, Halo. Um, and then before that, you had strategy games, mostly because, I mean, video games couldn't Technology really handle wasn't a whole very... lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, stuff like Sid Meier's Civilization and Civ II, uh, a bunch of Risk games... <laughs> yep. Like, yep. Grand strategy the risk games, games were good. Grand strategy games uh, were just an evolution of board games, in my opinion. Board games and, like, MUDs. Because um, you have, like, you already had a board game. You take a board game like Risk, right? Instead of setting up the, the board and getting tokens, dice, and uh, cards. You just digitize uh, it. Yeah, you just put it on a screen and hand every player a controller, and boom, now you're all playing the same game, but it's, you know, set up and Faster cleanup pace. is way easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's pretty obvious, but uh, one of the earliest strategy games, which would be Sid Meier's Civilization, um, and that series is still ongoing, like, dear lord. Uh, I never played OG Civilization. It looks like something that would intimidate me, <laughs> because of how and it I is full scuffed games. it is it, oh it's like, scuffed that it's hard to look at uh the first civilization game that i played was civilization 2 i remember my uncle gifted me and my brother civilization 2 and 3 nice. and he really liked 2 and i really liked 3 but we both played both of them and age of empires at the time as well um uh but civ 2 and 3 where they would just take ideas like being able to look at these games and see which ideas they took and which ideas they dropped, um, like as they evolved, uh, just made it, I guess, more fun to play. Um, a lot of games copied that formula of you start with essentially nothing and you have to build build up, yeah, yeah like an area that is yours and take over more and more of the map. Um, and the only interactions originally you had with the AI was, hey, we're going to beat the Fight crap you. out of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or we're going to not. And eventually they um, added in more systems to where it was like you create a religion with other cultures. Yeah, you, you have a you world can, congress. You can... Uh, yeah, we just uploaded some Civ 6 earlier. And uh, like obviously early game is like that old school free-for-all beat the crap out of everybody. But then yep. as you evolve into the more modern era, you can do stuff like pressure people with politics, trade diplomatic points, you can uh, have alliances to build your own like research or economy. 
yep. um, stuff like that. What are their strategy games? Other because I'm just gushing about Civilization at this point. What are their strategy <laughs> games? <laughs> Turn based or real time uh, were really popular. Well, you t- say turn-based, it, there's not really a lot of other turn-based strategy games outside of, like, everything devolves into risk on yeah. real-time strategies, or um, on uh, turn-based strategies. I guess turn-based strategies kind of evolved into the online trading card games. Um, mm. So rather than controlling a board, you just have, like, quote-unquote units that you control. So yeah, that, games like Hearthstone and whatnot. I was gonna say um, that that ties into like old school card games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, those card games too kind of evolved out of a, a way of like, hey, we don't want to play with just a regular fifty-two card deck. What if we create our own cards? Mm. Um, and then you get card games like Pokemon and, and, and Pokemon, Pokemon came out of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then eventually from the Pokemon cards, they made the Pokemon video games, and then from those Pokemon video games, you now have monster hunting, uh, well, Monster Hunter kind of evolved yeah, out monster of Pokemon. Hunter. Yeah. The Pal World. Pal World. Oh, the new ones where you can, uh, capture practically anything, including humans. Pokemon with shotguns. Um, Pokemon with shotguns. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, as far as real-time strategy goes, the, there are three major players, if I'm remembering correctly, that were the juggernauts, like the, they, they bore all the weight for real-time strategy games. Those were uh, Blizzard with Warcraft and Starcraft. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Westwood Studios, which later became EA Los Angeles. You know, EA. Thanks, EA. Yeah. Uh, with Command & Conquer. And Microsoft with Age of Empires and Age of Empires 2. And eventually Halo Wars. Um, That's true. I forgot Halo, Halo Wars, Wars was pretty popular. Oh, someone... Probably just because it was Halo. Well, yeah, okay. of course. When I first got into real-time strategy games a couple years ago, um, my one of my buddies was like, you got to play Halo Wars then. And I never really looked too much into it. I don't know, like, Jack about Halo. Because I, I just I haven't played a lot of Halo. Um, it, well, that's a shame. We may need to change that eventually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey man, I would like to. Yo, we um, can play through the entire Halo campaigns through. Uh, that'd be fun. That seems. I don't know how long. <laughs> It'd be quite a few hours, but Halo yeah, is really smart. Didn't Halo originate on console? Yes, Xbox. Yes. Yeah. Original and Xbox. The, I'm tracking that some of the ports were not the best for PC. Uh, the, well, the only true port for, uh, PC right now is the Master Chief Collection, and it is, it is scuffed beyond belief. The multiplayer campaign is, uh, serviceable, though. Mm. It's serviceable. Um, Anyways. So, back to what real-time strategy games, though. Uh, I believe the first one or at least one of the first ones that we would recognize today as a real-time strategy game, was a game, I think it was made by Westwood? It was for Dune, the movie, which is based off of Dune, the book series. So, you know, yay. How Um, did they make a game for a movie that only came out like a couple years ago? Wait a minute. That's not right. (laughs) Dune... Uh, the original Dune came out in, I think, 94. It, it came out in the early 90s. 1984. 84. Yeah, yeah. 1984. Uh, it and came out around the same time as the original um, Star Wars, or right after Star Wars, because they were trying to do, like, a Star Wars 2.0. I remember so, right. Essentially, someone made a video game, and I think it was Westwood, or the developers that would eventually become Westwood. They made a video game where you control units in a top-down fashion, and you have uh, a single resource, spice, um, that you use to spend on more units, and then you use it to build buildings and take out enemies. Right? Yeah. Classic top-down, and, and you can, you control units like one at a time, which like miserable yuck. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, the UI was like you click on a unit, and then you click the move command, and then you click on the map where you want to move them. Um, it was slow, clunky, but it was yeah. like the first foray into that. Now, and it I, was a movie tie-in of all things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I believe StarCraft, Battle the original StarCraft, or not StarCraft, WarCraft. The original WarCraft, uh, I think Blizzard beat uh, Westwood to the punch with their series launch because the original StarCraft, uh, I keep saying StarCraft, StarCraft is such a- They're almost game. interchangeable. One is sci-fi, one is fantasy. fantasy. I mean, they're basically the, original the same. original WarCraft released first. Um, and Warcraft had some nice chip tunes and some nice sprites, and obviously it was Blizzard, so it had a, a certain level of polish. polish yeah. Mm -hmm. But if I had to choose between that and the original Command and Conquer, uh, there, that's there's no contest. Like OG Command and Conquer had some amazing music; it handled excellently, even to this day. Like I freaking love. Commander I think you have some Command bias, Conquer. though. Um, I might. Yes, you do. It plays amazing, though. It plays so I, much. I, I will give you. I well, will Warcraft give you that and... are good games. <laughs> yeah. Um, Both Warcraft and, I... and Starcraft were not very popular on stateside because most people were obsessed with like dungeons and dragons and muds. Yeah. That was. I was gonna say, I'm talking OG Warcraft versus OG Command and Conquer. You hop over like one. And, you know, they had a bunch of expansions for both of them. But if you hop over a couple years to Command & Conquer 2 uh, versus, or, or like Red Alert, versus like StarCraft, that's where my bias starts. Night and day, yeah. StarCraft yeah. was, like, it blew everyone out of the water. That game was absolutely massive. Um, now, it was mostly massive overseas, again. Uh, but it was still, like, a big deal here in the States. Um, and... You know, at the time, uh, after being purchased by EA, uh, and after Tiberium Wars or, or Tiberium Sun, so Command and Conquer 2, didn't really match StarCraft. Uh, EA was like, "All right, you guys got to make some other games now." So they kind of pulled the plug on a bunch of projects and started making them make games like Renegade, which was still good, but like not in the genre. Yeah. At that point, they kind of admitted defeat to uh, Blizzard. And so Blizzard just ran away with the genre, releasing, you know, StarCraft II, which was, again, massive. That was um, one of the biggest RTSs of all time. Oh, man. I remember block parties. I was a kid when this happened, but I remember people doing block parties at the local GameStop for the release of StarCraft II. Yeah. Like, and then Warcraft was, came out with two and then three. Mm. And people didn't buy Warcraft three to play Warcraft. They bought it to play Dota. Defense of the Ancients, yeah. yeah. Freaking starting a whole new genre exactly. um, but while at, at the same time that this, all this was happening uh, a little known studio called Microsoft <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of them before yeah. I don't know if you've They're, ever heard of them before. they make computer parts or something nowadays yeah. I don't know <laughs> they made um, Age of Empires and Age of Empires the original one is super scuffed <laughs> like I'm sorry but it it plays a little bit like a brick, uh, having issues and everything, but you can control multiple units uh, yes, at the same time. and you built castles and things. Um, mm, you didn't build castles until Age of Empires 2. Oh, crud, yeah, you're right. Our lovely, and, and I didn't know this until somewhat recently, Sandy Peterson, who worked on Doom. Sa if Sandy Cheeks? Mistaken, no, Sandy Peterson, the original, one of the developers for the original Doom, worked on Age of Empires 2 as well. Ooh. So, like, both id and Microsoft. And, I don't know. Sucks that, that game... id tech is no longer around. Um... <laughs> no. That game is so... Age of Empires 2. They released 3 and 4, but 2 is still the most popular, even to this day, where all the way up until 2019, people were playing this game that was essentially a heavily modded game from the early 2000s, <laughs> just because it handled and played so tightly. Like... Yes. You know, it might have looked like crud. Uh, well, it looked good. And now it's called Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. Correct. <laughs> I released in 2019, and I yeah. have an ungodly amount of hours in that game. No. Um, a lot of the improvements for real-time strategy were... Because okay. the, the general idea is still sound. Build buildings, and, and different buildings have different abilities, powers, and whatevers, right? But you build buildings, and then you build units, and you control those units and buildings to take out your opponent's buildings and units. Um, there's a lot less diplomacy than like a turn-based strategy game because you're... This is just rush down the enemy. You're putting in an arena and they say fight. <laughs> yep. So grab resources. Uh, people like to get super competitive over like yes. actions per minute. 
um, how balanced your economy is, and uh, it makes for some really fun competitive gameplay to watch. It's not very fun to play, but it is fun to watch. I got into watching real-time strategy games with Kane's Wrath, um, Cyber, mm. who casts Kane's Wrath games, and it's fun because as a player, obviously, you're jumping around the map doing all these different actions, trying to get your stuff going. But as a spectator, you just get to see two sides build up armies and smash into each other. Like, you don't even need to know all the ins and outs of what counters what. Just watching that happen is so much fun. Watch the um, pretty lights. That's basically all. Yeah. Watch now, the nukes go off. Yeah. <laughs> Wolfie, there is one franchise that you forgot to mention. For real-time strategy? 2004 real-time strategy by Relic Entertainment, mm. Warhammer 40k. Oh yeah, the Warhammer series. Oh. That's true. Okay. But Warhammer time. also yeah. evolved from tabletop. I know did, very little Which was also, to some degree, a hero game. Well, I think right. Warhammer started out as like, hey, we like D&D. <laughs> Let's yeah. play with like military units in a sci-fi world or whatever Warhammer is nowadays. Uh, I mean, they have like and Warhammer 40k and other Warhammer. Yeah. Anyways, all the, all the different Warhammer. Yeah. And then but they're then just like, why not turn it into a video game? Yeah. That kind of video game, now that I'm thinking about it, cuz wouldn't that really like lend itself to a turn-based strategy game? Does. I think some yeah. Warhammer spans like four or five yeah. different genres. It's insanity. It you play the um, you play the tabletop, and everyone has like you take turns. I, I've played Warhammer tabletop before. You take turns. Um, yep. But if it's real time, like that just means that it's more yeah. intense and more. They have yeah. real time ones. They have card based games. They have. Um, they I even have Warhammer sure. Vermintide, which is like a first person dungeon crawler. First That's person um, multiplayer horde dungeon. Oh, so left for dead yeah. Warhammer. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was fun. It's insanity. It was fun. There's so many different genres Warhammer out of recently, that one game the, type. Didn't didn't yeah. Warhammer recently release like a TV show as well? Did they? Yes, I'm they did. Like super recent, yes, they did. Like wow. Yesterday. <laughs> no, I think it was like uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe. Ago? I don't know. And the only reason I'm remembering that is the main character. I can't remember his name. Hold on. Uh, John <laughs> John Warhammer. John Warhammer. <laughs> John Space Marine. John the, Space Marine. Well, no, the, the main character. The third. Was uh, Henry Cavill. Cavill. Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Cavill. Wow. That, that man... Mr. Superman himself... Oh, no, wait, you can't call Mr. him Mr. Superman. He's no longer yeah. Superman. The, the Mr. only the reason... Witcher him... Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. right. The only reason... <laughs> Poor Cavill has been fired from so many things. It's ridiculous. Yes. Poor guy. Oh, man. But the only reason that he became the Warhammer... <laughs> he became the John Warhammer. Warhammer. Yeah, I, I, I did watch he the likes, series. He likes, he likes Warhammer. Warhammer. He yeah. likes Warhammer. And he was fired from The Witcher. He was fired from The Witcher because the creative decisions they were making yes. did not align with The Witcher, or, like, the OG. The Witcher. games. Yeah, because he and loved he the very, games, if I remember right. <laughs> exactly. Dude, that is... He's got to be one of my favorite actors. He's he's a super nerd. That... The amount of stuff that he goes into with the amount of knowledge that, like, no one else in my, in my mind can play Geralt. And I've never... No. And I've never played The Witcher, but, like... When I, when I think of The Witcher, I think of Henry Cavill mm -hmm. murdering people in Blaviken because, you know, that scene was epic. Yeah. It was. It and pretty. that was good. Um, um, God. Okay, well, we've covered a lot of whoo. different genres. Does anyone have... Before we... I don't even Final know. Final thoughts? Does anyone have anything else that they just want to bring up as a non-sequitur? Or... Um, I don't know. Uh, what are we doing next weekend, uh, Stick? Playing D&D, I think. Well, no, we're playing D and D later today. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing next weekend for the stream? Uh, well, we, I think we're I planning on playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. Let's go. Yeah. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Another RTS. I was gonna say we didn't. Yeah, talk it's an RTS. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real-time strategy game. 
It's a single player real time strategy, play against, yeah, technically. Play against your guests. Yeah. Um, you know, try to get See how quickly you can kill everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tycoon games are another genre that we didn't get to touch on, but holy cow. Yeah, those like, are just crazy. Everyone and their <laughs> mother has made a tycoon game of some oh, kind. Simulator games? Yeah. Simulators? Sim or tycoon in front of everything. Oh god. Uh, we're gonna be here all day if we go into all the sim and tycoon games. Whew. But Especially tycoon. now because so many sim games are coming out. Mm. Microsoft Flight Simulator. Well, everyone feels like they can make one, but only a few succeed. But, you know. <laughs> Flight Simulator, yeah. Goat Simulator. Goat Sim. <laughs> Oh boy, that was that was a joke that game was, by four Coffee Stain. <laughs> Good grief. Untitled Goose Game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> fun games that we can play eventually, but I think, yeah, our live stream is going to be Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Uh, so, everybody look forward to that. Yep. Um, we might bring on <clears throat> what I'd like to do. I'm pitching this to stick right now. What? Uh, what we might do for that stream is we'll just have an open Discord chat that we can have, uh, like, our friends like Shane people drop or, in and out yeah or you know Blonde or Infamous can drop in and, and say hi and interact on stream and then just drop out whenever they feel like it yeah that'd probably be fun sounds like fun cool yeah. we'll probably be doing that so everybody please look forward to that yeah it'll be fun so thanks or, Shane for coming on to the show even yeah we talked mm -hmm. over you for most of the time thank you for joining us on what UG else? Podcast <laughs> do that stick ASMR <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but uh looks like we're gonna take a break Yep, taking a break, so... Bye for now, everybody. Goodbye!